So this is part four of our series. In part one, we covered all of the, the basic setup of our scene, um, getting all the core components in there. In part two, we set up um, you know, our, our initial exterior lights. In part three, we went about and created all of our interior lights. And now in part four, we're gonna talk about the finalization process. So bringing this all together um, and color grading your scene. So let's go ahead and jump into that right now. So to start with, I'm just going to highlight um, really the core things that have changed uh, from the previous uh, video that we had, so part three, uh, to explain how we got to this. So um, if I switch back to game mode, um, I'll show you everything that I've done here. So if you remember, we started with our under cabinet lights. Um, I simply duplicated those, so I've got them underneath. I'll jump over here. Um, I don't think, yeah, we've got our spotlight here. So I've taken this guy, uh, same thing that we had with our blueprint, added him. Um, I've also taken our track lights. So you can see we've got one here and we've placed several others throughout the scene. Um, again, all of those deriving from a, uh, a blueprint so we can edit once and it propagates through all of them. And then uh, we've also got our uh, directional light coming in and our skylight as well, which I think actually I shifted. Yeah, I shifted off here. Uh, moving this won't actually affect anything. Um, and we've added those into the scene as well. Uh, and then we've baked our lighting at production mode, which you can see a lot of those artifacts are completely gone. Um, and it looks much better. It gives us kind of the result that we're looking for. Um, very, very professional, very high grade. Um, so that is everything brought together into our scene. But of course, we're not quite done yet. Uh, there's a few other things that we want to do to really just finalize this entire scene. Now, to start with, the first thing that I wanna cover is the idea of actually creating um, a lighting scenario. Now, what is a lighting scenario? Um, a lighting scenario is effectively loading an additional map into your level, but instead of it being a, a level that's per se streamed, it's very, very similar, it's actually a different lighting scenario altogether. Now, why would this be beneficial? So, you know, I love this scene, it's great. Uh, in fact, actually we have a nighttime variation of this as well, um, but I don't wanna have to load two separate maps, right? Like I've, I'm not gonna move my tables, my chairs for nighttime. I want my scene to stay the same. I don't wanna have two separate maps. You do that through a lighting scenario. So to do that, I'll, I'll show you actually here real fast. I'm gonna take my, uh, my, my core daytime lighting components. So I'm gonna take my directional light, I'm going to take my skylight. Um, I may take the reflection captures as well. So if I actually scroll down in here for our reflection capture, so I'm going to select these guys. Um, and then let's say um, I'll keep my under cabinet lightings, but let's say, for example, that um, this spotlight. So I'll just select this guy. Let's say that that's part of my daytime lighting because he's on um, and it only affects it during the daytime. So with all of these components selected, I'm essentially going to move these to a new level. Now to do that, I'm going to go under here under my levels tab. Now, if you don't see this on yours, if you go up to windows levels, it will pop this open. So I'm going to go ahead and click this levels and I'm going to go to create new. Um, I can also do create new with selected actors. So if I do this, create new with selected actors, it's going to open this up and I'm going to go and go into my tutorial and I'm going to call this um, NY loft. So it's the same of our map underscore daytime. I'm going to go ahead and save this. Okay. So there we go, and it didn't, oh, there we go. Okay, so now it's right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just save this guy. Um, in fact, actually, yeah, we'll save it down here. So we saved, and I'm gonna right click on this one, because right now, I believe it's just set as just a streaming level, uh, but I'm gonna change this to um, lighting scenario, change to lighting scenario. So as soon as I click this, this now, you should notice this little lighting thing, um, it's now telling um, this entire level, there's not a level in the sense of you can get and play it, but it is now a lighting scenario. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to also change one other thing, change streaming method to, instead of blueprint, always loaded. Um, the reason you would wanna change it to blueprint is you can actually control this on level load. So for example, I could create a button in this to where by default, it loads my daytime. And let's say, for example, I have a different lighting scenario of nighttime, but I can control that through a button to where when I press that button, it switches my lighting scenarios. But in this case, because we only have one, I'm actually gonna change this to always loaded. So this should stay on all the time. Okay, great. So you're probably asking me, Ryan, I don't understand this because literally nothing's changed. Technically, yes, nothing has changed. However, if I do this, if I hide this, you can see that it, it 
it hides all of those different components that I have set on that level. Um, so I could completely um, hide this guy. I could go in, I could change out my my sphere, I could change out, um, so this, this back, that's what I'm talking about, this guy, to a nighttime one. I could go in, add different lights, change different intensities for my nighttime, do the exact same process, so create you know a new blank level or create it with the selected actors, move all those lights there, and now I have a nighttime one. Um, so what does that look like? Let me actually show you real quick. I'm gonna open uh, one of the maps actually that we have here. So um, let's not save this actually. So this is that same exact loft with the principles applied that um, I was talking about. So you can see here, um, ignore the cinematics. That's just simply allows me to control uh, when I was doing some renders with this. I've just got that on a separate layer. Um, but if you notice, it's not an actual lighting scenario whether these guys are. So I can hide this one, which is my nighttime, toggle my daytime. So there we go. So this is all of my lighting baked out. Um, and again, everything that's associated with this. So uh, that's, I think, just our, our skylight and a couple other ones. So if I hide that, um, and that was baked. I've also got this nighttime one, which loads in uh, the same as well. Again, I could control these where if I have a button using blueprints, I could swap between these two. So I could show, oh, hey, this is daytime, immediately swap, this is nighttime. That's a lighting scenario, uh, which works awesome. Um, so I'll go ahead and jump back to uh, what we were working on. Uh, but that would be the first thing that we want to do is just move all those different lighting components to um, this level. Now, if you noticed, I didn't save it and you're like, you know, oh, it's, it's gone now. Technically it's not, it's right here, this New York loft daytime. So I can also add an existing one. So I can go back up into here and I can do add existing. So if I, again, if I click this little drop down, add existing, and I can do New York loft daytime, and there we go. So let's just in. Now, of course, because of this, I've, I've actually messed something up to where we've got two directional lights. I'll show you this too. So if I hide this New York daytime, you don't actually see that component anymore. So I'm gonna take these guys, delete them, and then also delete my reflection captures because again that's what we moved over to this the scenario go back to my levels and show it so hopefully that all made sense that was probably way more confusing than it needed to be but suffice to say i've moved all of my daytime lighting into this um this uh this level lighting scenario and added it to my level um hopefully that makes sense so okay so now that we've got that, uh, which makes our um, uh, being able to update the stuff a little bit easier and a little bit faster, the next thing that I want to do is our final uh, color gradation on that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and kick off a lighting build, which will take a few minutes for production. We'll come back, and then we'll do our final color pass on this, um, and I'll show all the settings we need to change for that. So uh, we'll let lighting build at production level, and when we come back, we'll work on our uh, coloration. All right, and we are finished. I'll go ahead and open this up so you guys can see um, just kind of the expectations when it comes to how long a lighting build may theoretically take. So if you remember all of the, uh, uh, the lights that we had in our scene, um, it's not overly complicated and the scene's not very big, uh, but if we pull up our swarm statistics, so for me, I'm actually running a small swarm farm and what I have is two machines, um, this current machine, which has about 20 cores, and then a secondary machine running dual Xeons for a total of 40 cores. Um, so 60 cores in total running between the two of these. Um, and the time that it took, so if we look at our, um, our log, um, I want to say, let me go ahead and scroll down all over the bottom so we can see the latest stats, um, that it took around 30 minutes of total time to build the scene out on production builds. So that's why I highly, again, highly, highly recommend using uh, preview build or medium at the highest so you're not spending 30 minutes of time to find out, oops, she accidentally had a light placed wrong. So, Okay, um, so with that, lighting's built, and really the last and final step that we wanna take with this is to put an additional post-processing volume on top. So if you remember, way back when we started uh, the series in the first video, uh, we created this post-processing volume that we called kind of our base, which was our neutralizer. So if we go back in and take a look, again, we've got our exposure compensation, min, max, EV, our film settings, slope, toe, and shoulder, our ambient occlusion, um, and also we set it to enable. So that was our neutral scene, which is what we're looking at. And for all intents and purposes, it looks really good. Um, and we may want to just stop here, but I wanna show you how you can add a secondary post-processing volume on top to do all of your color gradation, everything that you need to do, all your cinematic effects 
while still retaining your post-processing volume base. So to do that, uh, we can go back over here and type in post-processing volume, drag one into your scene. Now I'm not gonna do that because I already have one in here. Um, and there's a couple things that you can change so that way it's running on top of your other one. So again, it's an additive thing, which is great. So in my post-processing volume, I'll come back to all the settings that I need, or at least that I have changed. Um, but in here, what I wanna do is underneath the post-processing volume settings, so it'll be enabled by default, but you wanna change the priority to one. So a higher priority means that this will override anything that's on the base. Now granted, it doesn't mean that it's going to override any settings that aren't affected. And what I mean by that is, so for example, I don't have a min or max uh, my, uh, my exposure value set in my new post-processing volume and because of that, it's going to use whatever's below it with the post-processing volume base, which we had set at one and one, if that makes any sense. So all you need to realize is that when you add this on top, set it to enabled infinite extent unbound priority of one, so just a higher priority than the base, anything that we go in here and start changing, this will affect and override anything below that. So, okay. So I'm just gonna do this real fast, and this may or may not be visible in the video, but this is with it disabled, this is with it enabled. So super, super subtle, um, but I'll just run through really quickly the settings that I changed to give me just a little bit more of a boost. So, okay, the first thing I wanna cover is this exposure compensation in, again, this is for my daylight. Uh, what's cool about this, if you remember with our lighting scenario, I can have a post-processing volume for my daytime, uh, lighting scenario and then I can have a separate one for my nighttime one so I can readjust it so it looks good no matter what so for this daytime one I've uh, adjusted this exposure compensation now before I jump into that I want to show you something uh, that I think is important before you start adjusting this so if I go under my lit mode and go to detail lighting so this is just my lighting with all my normal maps applied um, so this gives me a chance to see whether or not I've got blown out value so for example if I if I come up here and look at the window this is really, really close to white, but it's not perfectly white, which means I've got pretty good exposure as is. Now, if I uncheck this, you'll see, ramps it up a little bit, ramps it down. So I highly re recommend before you really start going in and adjusting a bunch of these exposure settings, check your detail lighting just to make sure that it's, it's well balanced. So I'll go back to lit, and what I can do with my exposure compensation is ramp it up, ramp it down. So um, that way I don't have to try to go back in and really change all of my lighting to try to make it just slightly brighter. Um, this is a perfect way to do that. So I think we'll take it back down. I think I had it negative 0.5, uh, something like that. So um, this is good, that's fine. Um, so I changed my exposure compensation in this one. The next setting that I went into um, was actually my color gradation was in my global. So I just increased the contrast just a little bit. So if I toggle this on and off, you can see we just get a little bit more of uh, effectively what's like a little punch. Um, so taking that up just a little bit gives me a little bit more contrast in my scene. And uh, with my gain as well, I took this so it just kind of moves um, a lot of kind of like those mid-tones up. So the scene itself overall is just slightly, just a little bit, uh, a little bit brighter. Uh, again, this is all just completely aesthetic. You can change it however you want. Uh, you can even go in here. So let's say, you know, for example, saturation. I can desaturate the scene. Um, you know, push extreme is what you want. But if you notice, this is a non-destructive workflow, which is awesome. Okay, and the next thing is I went into my shadows and I just increased the gain just a little bit. So what this did is it just, uh, it took my shadowed areas and made it just slightly brighter. Uh, again, kind of more of a balanced, neutral look, which is what I was going for. And then finally, the last thing that I changed in here was my ambient occlusion. So if you remember, um, as I said earlier on, this is something I see a lot in um, w when people do things. So if you kind of look in this upper corner here of the scene, so by increasing and decreasing this, by default, this is extremely broad. So um, I'll toggle this on and off. You can see that it's it's very fuzzy and I'm not a, a huge fan of that. So I took my intensity, I believe I took it to like 0.5, but I decreased the radius. Easiest way to do this, bump it up to one, I took mine down to I think about fifth, uh, about 15, um, and then just dropped this down to about 0.25. Um, so it makes it uh, just to look a little bit more natural. Um, and that was it. So again, what's great about having this additional post-processing volume, so I can toggle it on and off. Again, we can see what we've done here. This is a great way for me to be able to control the look of my scene, but if I ever need to go back in and say readjust lighting, I can simply just disable this and my base one, which is neutral, is still there. I don't have to go in and try to readjust all my settings. Um, so it's a super great way to do that. Okay, so 
that wraps up and concludes uh, this, uh, uh, I want to say it was in total like four-part series for lighting interiors. I really hope this helped. Um, I, I can't express enough how I appreciate all your guys' comments uh, regarding having a tutorial like this. I'm in the exact same boat as you that when I went to start looking for interior lighting uh, tutorials, uh, many of them were either very sparse or they just completely glossed over, you know, adjusting things to get the look that you want and teaching the principles. So again, I thank you guys for your comments and hopefully um, this scratches a really nice itch when it comes to, you know, creating beautiful interior lighting, but doing it where you don't have to do a ton of iterations or a lot of back and forth. Um, so very straightforward process. So as always, I really appreciate you guys' support on this channel. Again, it's not uh, it's not asked for in any way, um, but your likes, subscribes go a long way to help me continue to make this content. So again, from me to you, thank you guys very much. I hope you enjoyed this series, um, and I'll catch you on the next one.